Hello, this is Jordan. This video is being recorded on the afternoon of Monday, May 29th, 2023. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I'd like to wish everyone out there a happy Memorial Day. Hope everyone has enjoyed the holiday weekend. In this video, I'm going to discuss the weekly and short-term outlook for gold and silver and gold and silver stocks. So getting right into it, here we have the weekly candle charts, gold at the top, silver at the bottom. Um, technically, the, the real negative case on gold right now, technically, is if you look at the weekly candle and the monthly candle charts, uh, there's some nasty bearish candles in there. So we've definitely put in some kind of an interim peak in gold. And last week, gold closed the week below 1980. So losing that uh, previous support. And so as far as where the next downside support could be for gold, uh, in the you know, I've been thinking more about the medium term uh, and, and not necessarily over the coming, uh, coming days, but... Um, you know, just looking at the price action and thinking about, you know, past key levels, 1900 is the level that comes into my mind. So on a short, very short term basis, you know, this week, 1900 is support. I think there's also some support around 1880. So those are potential levels uh, to look at in the very short term. Now, moving beyond the very short term, you do have an open gap around 1867, I think. Uh, but I most focus on, you know, all these long term moving averages. If you look at the 200 day all the way uh, to the 40 month moving average, you know, we have some of those weekly equivalents here. You can see uh, they're coming in at 1822, 1842, 1837. So right just right below the mid 1800s, there's quite a bit of uh, long term support, I would say. And so those moving averages over the next month or so, look for them. I mean, they're sloping up, so they will rise. And so, you know, right now we're looking at 1820, 1830, uh, maybe, you know, maybe 1840 a bit. I think the 200 days at 1836 or 1838. So you give it a month or two, those moving averages could be up to, you know, 1840, 1850. But th those are really in my opinion, the major support levels that we have to focus on right now for gold. But you know, circling back to the very short term, look at 1900 and also look at the stocks because when you get into a period of sharp market moves on either side, the, the, when you get to that point, the stocks will typically lead the moves. And I do think the stocks are getting close to a bounce. Now, moving on from gold to silver, uh, silver has come down, you know, the, the equivalent to the 200 day is around 22, you know, zero, zero. Um, so silver is not that far from that point. There's also lateral support below 21 in the twenties, as you can see those dash blue lines there. Um, so those are the key levels for silver. Um, so obviously the 200 day, uh, I mean, that's setting up where, we should get some kind of a bounce from silver there. And in addition, I would say the same thing with the stocks. So looking at the stocks here, we have GDX, GDXJ in the middle and SILJ at the bottom. Um, I apologize as these charts are not, they don't, they'd be just visually, they don't look that great to me. Uh, I, I'm just talking about the look, not necessarily, you know, bullish or bearish. Um, so I got to figure out, you know, a, a better, chart period or you know maybe i should just use the lines or remove the 200 day moving averages it's probably that the 200 day moving averages here they kind of obfuscate um you know what we can see particularly in the gold stocks because we see at the bottom silj you know they've already lost the 200 day uh, in the low tens you know the silge came down to 955 so you do have the first support level around 920, 925, then there looks to be stronger support just below nine, you know, call it 875 or 880. So that's another, uh, what is that? Another 7% uh, or so potential downside for SILJ. And when you're looking at GDX and GDXJ, you could just say potentially four or 5% downside. So GDXJ, for example, closed at 36, 32. There's a confluence of strong support there at 35. You have the 200 day there. And also when you look at uh, lateral support, you know, that line going all the way across, uh, you can see 35 was a peak in August. It was a key level in November, December, you know, also a key level earlier this year. 
So 35 for GDXJ. You, there is a gap, I think, that comes down to 33, 33.50. So very short term, those are the key levels. Um, 35, and then you have that gap. And I would prefer to see the gap fill right away because then the market would get even more oversold and then you could have even a better bounce from that level. Whereas if GDXJ rebounds from 35, which is quite possible, maybe it rebounds from 35 up to 38 or so, and then it you know comes back down, it can fill the gap at another point. Um, so ju- just a short-term preference. Um, same for GDX. I mean, GDX, the 200-day, just below 20, no, 28.60. So below 29, GDXJ is at 30.41. Uh, there is gap support down to 28. So to be safe, if you're thinking about you know putting capital to work, to be safe, you probably would want to see those gaps fill. But um, nevertheless, things are always stock specific. Uh, the last thing I want to mention is if we're looking at breadth indicators and the very short term, so the percentage of stocks that close above the 20 day and 50 day, I track those. And so right now for the Huey Gold Bugs Index, all those stocks are in GDX, uh, yeah, GDX. 0% of the Huey closed above the 20 day, 0% closed above the 50 day. Uh, so when you get to that level of oversold, you know, it, it tends to set up a short term rebound. Looking at GDXJ, I think it's 7% have closed above the 20 day moving average, and only 15% have closed above the 50 day moving average. So Um, you think about those things, you think about how close the miners are to the 200 day moving averages. We're setting up for some kind of relief bounce or relief rally here. And again, when you're, when markets are trending sharply, um, you know, and they're getting a little stretched, be it, you know, too much upside or, you know, they're stretched on the way up or stretched on the way down during a correction. That's when you can look at the miners and they might give you a hint as to, you know, where the next short-term move could be going. And so my point is, um, I, I, we're seeing it more clearly here in the stocks that they're, they're coming to a point where they're probably going to rebound in the short term. And so I'd focus more on that, uh, than, you know, gold itself. Um, but, uh, it, it, guess what I'm saying is that rebound can occur before we see gold bounce from 1900. If that's, where gold is going to bounce from. Of course, in the very big picture, you know, looking further out, uh, gold against the stock market, that's critical. Um, and so that's something we're going to continue to watch, you know, over the coming days and weeks. And, uh, you know, if we, if we do get this rally in precious metals, you know, I, I would like to see strong performance in relative terms uh, against the stock market. So with that being said, you know, the medium term trend still looks to be to the downside, but the very short term trend, I think we're setting up for a rebound, which should start, um, you know, potentially here in the coming days. Thanks so much for tuning in. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment and I'll talk to you guys again in the next video.